Hi hey everybody, Dan Bailey here with another Luminar tutorial. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you Luminar's new AI Augmented Sky tool, which was introduced in the recent version 4.2 update uh, that Skylum just pushed out a few days ago. It's similar to their Sky Replacement tool, which they introduced a few months ago. Uh, I did a tutorial on that as well. Uh, and that allows you to drop in different clouds and different uh, sky scenes into your photo uh, and replace the existing sky. And now with the Augmented Sky tool, uh, you now have the option to add uh, different objects into the sky. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of uh, default objects that are built into the program, or you can upload your own. And so today I'm going to show you uh, some of the objects that, that they have present uh, in the software and how you can use them. Uh, and it's, it's kind of fun. And, and so I'm going to say right now, I'm kind of a purist. I, I don't usually augment my skies. I don't usually put things in there that weren't there when I shot them. I'm, I really, in my photography, I tend to embrace the challenge and, the, and the, the passion of, of trying to find compelling scenes uh, and capture them as is uh, without resorting to processing uh, or adding things that weren't there. Uh, so normally I don't do that kind of thing. But um, as we all know, right now is not a normal time. Uh, we live in a very different world right now than we did a couple months ago or even a couple weeks ago. And uh, at this point, we can use all of the extra funness we can get. And so that's what this sky replacement tool is. It allows you some fun. So I'm just going to walk through and show you some of the things that I've done with it uh, and show you how easy it is to use. And maybe it'll help spark some creative ideas that you can run with in your own photography. So we're going to start with this image here. Uh, just kind of a standard mountain scene with a nice bright blue sky. And this is kind of what you need for the sky replacement or for the augmented sky to work. It needs an open recognizable piece of sky in order to latch on to. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, hit edit on this image, bring up the edit panel, and you'll see that the augmented sky is down here in this creative palette. And so it's the second one down. There's sky replacement. Uh, so, you know, for example, if we wanted to add a dramatic sky with a sky replacement, then it does its, does its calculating here, and it does a pretty good job. So... Um, again, you can check out my tutorial on that and see some of the options, but we're going to undo that and we're going to go to augmented sky. And so the first thing uh, that you do is you choose what you'd like to be added into the photo. And so here, uh, we're going to look at, um, well, I, yeah, we're going to, we're going to add some birds and I had actually added these before. So I just turned that on. So this birds three. So there's a few birds there and uh, you know, they've got a few different presets. So they've got three birds, three sets of birds, a few sets of clouds, an aurora, an eagle, uh, fireworks, uh, lightning, moon, mountains, plain, rainbow, and a giraffe, you know, which, I mean, that's, that's pretty vital. You know, that's going to come in handy a lot in photography. Um, you, you, there's often times when you'll need to add a giraffe to your photo, as you'll see soon. So uh, anyway, uh, once, you, once you decide what object to place, uh, you actually can click this place object and that allows you to change the size of the object and also move it around the frame. So we could do that. And then when we're done, we just hit place object again. And then in the advanced settings here, we can uh, hit defocus, which that allows you to change your depth of field. So say you were shooting a long lens. I wouldn't want to defocus this scene because my background is sharp. Uh, and my foreground sharp too, and so that just wouldn't look right. So we'll just keep that. We'll just keep that at uh, at zero. So, uh, so that's the first one. And um, yeah, birds. Adding birds. Easy as pie. Okay, so we'll go back to the library, and our next image is going to be. Let's uh, let's grab this one here. So we'll hit edit, and. Whoop, and we'll bring up uh, the augmented sky panel here, the tool palette. And let's go ahead and add some clouds. So we'll see what clouds are there. There's clouds one, or it's clouds three rather. There's one. Uh, we could do that. Um, how about, let's see. That's kind of cool. That that's, gives a neat look, adds a lot of interest to the photo. It's sort of like sky replacement. 
Uh, anyway, we can, uh, it's, it's already placed pretty well. Uh, we could relight the scene. Uh, you know, as you can see, I've got some warmth here and the sunset light in the mountains. So relighting helps you kind of match the background or you match your object to uh, the way that the scene is lit naturally. And so I might want to increase the warmth. So yeah, that's just a couple minutes and yeah, we've got, you know, we've got a, a much more interesting photo. So, uh, okay, let's go to the next one. I'll go back to the library. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. I played around with this earlier. Uh, flying in my little Cessna at sunset, flying home after shooting some aerials. And for this one, I'm going to do Birds 1. <laughs> I think that's really cool, flying by this massive flock of ravens. Uh, I guess it would be, technically be a murder of ravens because uh, the ra ravens are part of the corvid family like crows and it's a murder of crows. So I think this is pretty cool as is. You know, one click and I I've got a pretty cool augmented sky in my scene. Is it natural? Is it real? I don't know. Uh, I've never seen flocks of or murders of ravens uh, that big when I'm flying by them. Uh, in fact, it's best not to fly near big flocks of birds in a single engine plane, or a big plane for that matter. Sully can tell you that. Um, but in the interest of having fun and making a photo that's uh, just oddly creative. And as I said, we need to embrace any kind of creative fun that we can get our hands on uh, in this very strange time that we're living in right now. So yeah, birds. Okay, let's go back to the library, choose our next photo. Uh, oh yeah, here's a, here's a fun one. So, uh, Mr. Raven, Mr. Close-Up Raven here. Uh, augmented sky. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple, a different technique out here. Uh, so here's, here's a balloon. So place object. We can move it. We can change the size. And then, you know, I shot this with a long lens. And so the background would normally be out of focus. So this is a time, hit place object to, to place it. This would be a time where I could hit defocus and, and bring that thing out of focus as if I were using a long lens. And so that actually adds a lot of realism to the photo because that doesn't, that doesn't quite look real, uh, but that does look more real. So yeah, or we could add, uh, yeah, here's a fun one. Um, we could add a plane or Let's do plane two. That's much more exciting. So plane two, whoop, place object, move it, make it way bigger. And this is actually feasible because you know you you could theoretically have a a seven forty seven cargo jet flying uh, right over the house or right over the neighborhood, uh, taking after taking off from Anchorage Airport. So that's a, a pretty plausible. Uh, pretty plausible image. That's you, that's actually an image you might see uh, out there. So, okay, uh, let's see, what else do we got? Um, we could do, oh yeah, here's a fun one. Uh, rainbows. Or here's a, let's see, this rainbow. Let's go to rainbow two. There we go. How fun is that? Let's bring that back into focus. And yeah, how about that? That's beautiful. That's a winning shot right there. I'm gonna enter that into a contest. Again, fun. I mean, you get your kids in front of the computer if you've got kids. I mean, they're at home from school, rambunks is driving you crazy right now, right? So, you know, bring them, in, bring them into the process and have some fun, make some, make some fun pictures. You know, it's, it's just photography, it's just pictures. Uh, again, anything you can take your mind off not watching the news and just having fun in life, so. All right, let's try something else. Let's go to the next picture. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a cool one. Uh, this was actually my favorite one that I did. So the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna create this sort of otherworldly scene. You know, you could, you could make, you could theoretically come up with this kind of really cool sci-fi or fantasy scene that might match the, you know, match the setting of the book that you're reading right now. Uh, or just, you know, just, make some really cool piece of art. Uh, so I'm, so I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna make this look like it's some kind of 
otherworldly scene. Maybe it's Mars. So I'm going to go to Blockbuster, which is giving this this already really warm, already got a warm look, but I'm going to add this even more kind of dynamic richness to the scene, uh, kind of this reddish orange. And then I'll go to uh, Augmented Sky Palette, and I'm going to add Planet. And so I've not, I've got this like Jupiter looking, like Jupiter and I think it's Titan, Jupiter's biggest moon. Uh, and we'll increase the size there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but one thing I want to do, uh, you'll notice that the sun is hitting this side of the peaks instead of, you know, the right side. So if I, I can resize it by dragging the handle, but if I'm outside the handle, you can see the little turny icon. And so I just click and drag that, and I turn this 180, 180 degrees, and there we go. And so now I've got, I've got this really cool otherworldly scene. I, I really like that. So uh, that was the lead off. I did a blog post about this, and that was the lead off photo I used. So uh, let's do another one. That's way too much fun. So let's go to this one. Uh, we're going to continue with that kind of otherworldly sci-fi fantasy uh, theme. And we're going to go with uh, planet number four. And so that brings up a giant Saturn. And so we're going to do this. We're going to make this way bigger. Increase the size. Let's go even bigger. Whoop. Go even bigger. Let's do this. And uh, and one thing I might need to do, usually it's very good about knowing where the edges of your the rest of your scene are and the sky ends, uh, but sometimes there's a little overlap. As you can see, it's kind of getting confused. The blue ice sort of looks like sky. It probably has a similar color characteristic. So I might need to do some, some erasing. Uh, so we'll place it, and now I can go to Edit Mask and Brush. And brush is brush is going to brush in the effect. Uh, so what I will do is once I start brushing, it brushes everything in, and I'll brush where I want the planet to be, and not where I don't. So I'll kind of end here at the edge, and then make sure I'm adding, you know, painting in the rest. And so now I'm not letting the planet go past the borders of the cave. Uh, let's move it down a little bit. I've got a couple of ice chunks up there. A couple of things in the sky giving me little blips. There we go. So, place object again. Uh, and now I'm going to add a little bit of... I'm going to go to the loot styles here. And just to give this a little more dynamic look, uh, let's go to, uh, what did I look at before? Um, let's go to, yeah, 19, 1990. And maybe add a little bit of grain, a little bit of film grain. And maybe we can go to... Uh, AI structure. Let's boost the structure. That's pretty cool. So here's uh, going back to the augmented sky filter. We can turn it off, and so that's without, and and there's with. And again, it's just fun. It's just it's just goofing around. I mean, this doesn't have to be serious all the time. So if you're not having fun with photography, what the hell are you doing anyway? So anyway, um, oh, I have one more to show you, a uh, very important one. So let's go back to the library, and we'll go to this one. And this time, we're going to add a giraffe. So there we go. Uh, and you see it's done a pretty good job of placing it behind the tree. Uh, let's, let's move this guy in a little bit. So maybe even change the size, make it a little smaller. 
Smaller giraffe hiding in the brush. Hiding behind the behind the uh, frosty tree there. So, yeah, now that's a great photo. And that's the kind of thing you want to go for when you're shooting imagery and uh, creating compelling photos. Um, especially when your kids are hanging around with you. So I don't have any kids. I'm my own kid, so I have to do this stuff to amuse myself. Um, but if you have kids, bring them into the process, especially right now. You know, there's it, it's a good time to just be creative and and have some some fun together time with uh, with people who are important to you. So anyway, that's the uh, augmented sky tool from Luminar uh, version 4.2 update. If you already have Luminar, you can just go to the check for updates in your uh, in your menu, and it'll automatically load that. Uh, if you don't have Luminar yet. Uh, you can uh, purchase that. Uh, there'll be a link in the bottom, in the description of this video. You can get a link to get that. Uh, and if you use coupon code Dan Bailey, you'll save ten dollars on the program. So anyway, I hope you're able to find some time to have fun with your photography these days uh, in this weird, odd time we're experiencing right now. You can check out my other tutorials as well, uh, and, and please subscribe to my channel and find me on the web at danbaileyphoto.com uh, or on social media and Patreon at Dan Bailey Photo. So thanks for watching uh, and have a great day.